hello everyone and thank you for participating to this Open Afra Day Mexico. I am Sumayam Salam. I am cloud consultant at Red Hat and today I will present accelerating NFV data plane with SRUV and GPD cap. NFV stands for Network Function Virtualization. As with other industries, telecom companies are looking to be agile and to be able to bring new services to market as quickly as possible. NFV is an approach widely adopted by telecom companies for the deployment, management and scaling of their network functions. So, what is concretely NFV? NFV is a concept that aims to transform dedicated physical network hardware to virtual network appliances running on standard resilient scalable hardware. So, as we can see in the schema, on the left, physical network appliances, and on the right, virtual network appliances running on top of standard hardware. VNF. VNF stands for Virtual Network Function. It is a software that performs a specific network function, such as routing, firewalling, or other. So, in general, there is some confusion between NFV and VNF. We can here point quickly on the difference. NFV refers to a global concept as a framework for running software defined network functions. VNF is the implementation of one network function as a software decoupled from the underlying hardware function. Benefits of VNF So we can talk about cost effectiveness and power consumption reducing because we replace physical hardware with software. Time saving because before it could take more than one year to introduce new services. And scalability, elasticity and dynamicity because in general we have a cloud-based model. Enablers for NFV Several recent technology developments make the goals of NFV achievable. We will explore in this presentation SRUV and TPDK. SRUV stands for Single Root Input Output Virtualization. It defines a standardized mechanism to virtualize a PCIe device. This mechanism can virtualize a single PCIe device to appear 
as multiple virtual PCIe devices. Each device can be directly assigned to a virtual machine, bypassing the hypervisor and virtual switch layer. So, SRUV allows multiple virtual machines running a variety of guest operating systems to share a single PCIe network adapter within a host server. This can be achieved through the introduction of two PCIe functions, physical function or PF and virtual function or VF. Physical function is a full PCIe device that includes SRUV capabilities. A single PF can provide the management for a set of virtual functions. A virtual function is created and managed through a PF. A VF is a lightweight virtual PCIe device that provides at least the necessary resources for data movements. A virtual function can be assigned to a virtual machine. So here we can make a comparison between traditional virtualization and SRUV. For traditional virtualization, the traffic comes to the NIC, it is sent to the hypervisor, and after that, it will reach the virtual machine. For the SRUV case, the traffic will be directly sent to virtual machine through its virtual function by bypassing completely the hypervisor. So SRUV benefits. First point, we have the virtual machine directly accessing the physical network adapter and bypassing the hypervisor and virtual switch layer. This gives place to low latency, increased network throughput and near line wire speed. The second point, one physical NIC can be shared between lots of virtual machine so we can talk about extending the capacity of the device and lowering hardware costs. SRUV support. SRUV is now supported by most hypervisors, KVM for Linux, VMware for ASXi and Microsoft Hyper-V and others. So here we can talk about some hardware considerations for implementing SRUV. The physical host must have a compatible processor, support input-output memory management unit called EOMU, and have EOMU enabled in the BIOS support SRUV and have SRUV enabled in the BIOS. The physical NIC must be supported for use with the host and SRUV, have SRUV enabled in the firmware. PF driver for the physical NIC, a needed driver compatible with hypervisor type and release must be installed 
on the physical host. Guest OS. The guest OS must be supported by the NIC on the installed hypervisor release. VF driver in the guest OS must be compatible with the NIC, be supported on the guest OS release, be installed on the operating system. SRUV in OpenStack. SRUV was first introduced in the OpenStack Juno release. The following manufacturers are known to work Intel, Mellanox, Killogic, and Broadcom. Some tips to enable SRUV in OpenStack. We assume that all the hardware prerequisites are satisfied, like we discussed in the earlier slides. On the compute nodes, we need to create our virtual functions. Here, in this case, we need 8 VF, so we make echo 8 in the slash sys slash class slash net slash nickname slash device slash sruv new vfs to check our virtual functions we can use the lspci command on our compute nodes we have to edit the nova.com file by configuring which PCIe device the Nova Compute Service may use. On the controller nodes, we have to edit our ml2conf.eni to add SRUV NIC switch as a mechanism driver. On our controller nodes, we have to configure Nova Scheduler by adding PCIe pass-through filter to our enabled filters. On our compute nodes, we have to install the SRUV agent, edit SRUV agent.eni file, and run the SRUV agent. We move forward to discover GPDK. GPDK stands for Data Plane Development Kit. It is an open source software project with a vibrant community of development contributors. Because it is open source and free, a large portion of the tech industry are working to improve GPTK with its release update, like Intel, IBM, Cisco, and others. So, why GPTK? By default, in Linux networking, Linux uses kernel to process network packets. This puts pressure on kernel to process packets faster as the NIC speeds are increasing at fast. So, what is completely GPDK? GPDK is a set of libraries and user space drivers for fast packet processing, enabling applications to perform their own packet processing directly to the NIC by passing the kernel. So here we can see a comparison between Linux networking without and with 
DPDK. So for normal Linux networking packet arrive to the NIC, the NIC push the packet to the Linux kernel. The kernel will process packet and send it to the right application in its corresponding user space. With GPTK, the NIC can talk directly to the application by passing completely the Linux kernel. In this case, the packet processing happens in the user space. So DPDK with OpenV switch. Here we can see the case of DPDK with OpenV switch. OpenV switch can be combined with DPDK for better performance, resulting in a DPDK accelerated OVS. As we can see, for OVS without DPDK, the forwarding plane of OVS is part of the kernel and for OVS with DPDK we replace the standard OVS kernel forwarding path with a DPDK based forwarding path in the user space. It is also possible to run DPDK in VNF and in this case we combine DPDK in OVS and DPDK in VNF. Hence we can get another level of optimization. DPDK now supports all major CPU architectures and NICs from multiple vendors, which makes it ideally suited to applications that need to be portable across multiple platforms. DPDK in OpenStack OVS DPDK or DPDK bundled with OVS can be used to provide high performance networking between instances on OpenStack compute nodes. DPDK benefits by enabling very fast packet processing dpdk is making it possible for tel telecommunications to move performance sensitive applications like the backbone for mobile networks and voice to the cloud it was also identified as a key enabling technology for NFV. For G and virtualization, telecom 4G architectures you use sorry VNFs, typically running on virtual machines. Those virtual machines are deployed in most of the cases in a cloud platform like OpenStack. Last year, we have seen a movement of VMs out and containers in, while virtualized network functions, or VNF, are currently transforming the telecom industry. The industry is taking another step forward with cloud-native network functions called CNF. CNF use containers to deploy network functions. Just 
as VNFs provide many benefits to telecom careers, CNF incorporate all those benefits and more. 5G and Kubernetes. The 5G architecture in most cases is based on a cloud native design that leverages Kubernetes as the orchestrator that provides automated deployment and lifecycle management of CNF deployed on pods. So the benefits of transition to CNF. CNF help address some of the challenges that still exist when using virtualization and VNFs. CNF offer auto scaling, support for DevOps, incredible fault tolerance and fast restart, monitoring and reporting. Accelerating the 5G, the 5G data plane with SRUV and TPTK, 5G use cases need direct connectivity between CNF running on Kubernetes pods and physical NICs. SRUV has been used for quite some time through plugins delivered by Intel and other contributors. So SRUV was integrated in Kubernetes. To bypass the Linux kernel so the data input output is sent from user space in the pod to the NIC, the DPDK was integrated to CNF. So an example of SRUV implementation with Kubernetes. Kubernetes uses CNI plugins, CNI for container network interface to provide advanced networking functionality for pods. Malta CNI is a plugin developed by Intel to enable attaching multiple network interfaces to pods. An SLUV CNI plugin exists. It is used to configure an additional SRUV network to allow pods to attach to a virtual function on SRUV capable hardware on the host system. And like we can see in the schema, this plugin is chained with Malta's CNI plugin. So as conclusion, 4G and 5G applications are all about low latency and fast data processing at high throughput. These include not just the wireless core, radio applications, but also custom workloads such as video streaming, VoIP and others. Along with SRUV, DPDK is a high performance option that enables the industry to move latency sensitive applications to the cloud. Thank you for participation.